Reasons for and against getting a GS911. I've always wanted a GS911 and ever since I bought this 2006 R1200 GS Adventure I was planning on buying one. But then the team at Hex Innovate, which is based in South Africa where I live, asked me whether I'm keen to test a GS911 and help with R&D field testing. So over the next couple of months I will be making a series of videos on the various functions of the GS911 and I'll give you my open and honest opinion. And if it's as good as everyone says, I might even buy one at the end of the process. So if you have any questions or if there's any specific video you'd like to see on the GS911 scan tool, please drop it in the comments below and I'll try to make it. So let's get to the reasons for and against the GS911. So I've got three reasons. The first one being, and that's why I parked my two Suzuki's here. Um, this old one, 1988 Suzuki, is completely it's mechanical. There's some electrics, but it's limited to the distributor, um, spark plugs. Uh, there's, there's not much, there's no computers in there. And that makes me feel safe. If you follow this channel for a while, you know that's what I liked about my old XR650L, the AG200. I like bikes that's simple. And if something goes wrong, it's not that difficult to diagnose. Whereas the other Suzuki there, my wife's 2010 Gen 3 Suzuki, has a computer. So if something goes wrong, if a sensor fails, it's less, uh, well, it's more difficult to figure out. And that is the problem with the GS1200. Um, and one of the reasons why I never uh, liked newer adventure bikes is because of the electronics. So you rely on a computer or a couple of computers to control the system. So there's a computer for the ABS, there's a computer for the instrument cluster, there's a computer for the engine. So if something fails, if a sensor fails or if there's some short somewhere, it's very difficult to diagnose. The bike could just be dead or just runs like rubbish and you don't know where the problem lies. And that is um, the main reason why anyone would want one of these. And um, you simply plug it into the diagnostics port and you can scan the bike and you can read the fault codes or it can tell you if there's some system malfunction. So that is the obvious um, and biggest reason for getting one of these, especially if you're going to travel off the beaten track. Um, so if the bike fails um, or it just stalls and doesn't want to start, you can plug it in and you can try to figure out um, where to have a closer look. Uh, the second reason is I just always love to understand how stuff works. And with uh, these modern bikes with the computers, there's so much information in the computers that you can read. You can read the live, live sensor data. You can plug this in and you can read it on a graph or real time on your phone. And um, you can read all the values. You can read the cylinder uh, head temperatures. You can read the engine temperature, the air temperature. Uh, you can read the dwell angle. You can read uh, the oxygen sensors. So you can quickly see if there's something wrong with the air fuel mixture. I have played around with it a bit, but I'm still learning. So I'm going to make a video on that, um, on each of those uh, functions in future. So if there's something you want to see, um, send me a comment and I'll try to figure it out and make a video on it. Um, but I just love learning how this stuff works. And I've scanned a buddy's bike this morning and we can compare our uh, air fuel mixtures and to see how it differs. Um, so getting to know the bike, this is super useful. And you can also then quickly see if there's something wrong. So for instance, I know my one cylinder is running richer than the other one, so I have to figure out what the issue is there. And then the, the third reason why I feel um, a tool like this is super helpful is for certain service functions. Now, this bike doesn't have the uh, service reminder, it's too old, um, but on the more modern bikes, it reminds you to service it, and if you service it yourself, you have to reset the, the service reminder, and you can use this tool for that. So one service task that I've done um, when I got this scan tool, the GS911, is to reset or to recalibrate the idle actuator motors or the stepper motors. Um, so I'll make a video on that, on the detail of it. Um, but that is something that you need a tool like this for, or you have to go to your dealer. I also want to sync the throttle bodies um, because it's a regular maintenance item on the maintenance schedule. And I don't think it's ever been done. I don't think 
all the dealers always do it when it comes up in the service schedule. So uh, yeah, we'll make a video on that because that is a function, that is a service item that I want to do. So those are the reasons for getting one of these tools and my reasons for wanting one. Um, now let's look at the reasons against or the downsides. And I can only think of one and that is that it's expensive. Um, there are some cheaper options out there that doesn't have all the functions and that's more fiddly because you need an Android tablet or a phone. Um, this works on a Mac and an Android or on your iPhone. Um, uh, so it's expensive, but if you take into account what the dealerships charge, and I live three hours from the nearest dealer, so if I wanted to take the bike in for a service or even just a, a calibration of that, that stepper motors, I'd have to take a day leave, that's already more than the tool. I also have to pay for the, the labor. And um, I've looked online, I don't know what it is in the US, but I saw one guy that said he's 600 mile service. The first service was $400, that's what they quoted him. So that's already more than this tool. So if you do it yourself, um, you have uh, the, the capability of scanning everything, seeing what's wrong, or making sure there's no fault codes. Um, and you can do it over and over again. So I feel uh, it's, the price is one thing, but if you pay upwards of fifteen or twenty thousand dollars for a new GS twelve fifty or the GS thirteen hundred now, um, this is small change. So those are my reasons for and maybe against the GS nine eleven. Let me know what you think. If you want one, if you have one, what you use it for, or if you have any questions and stuff that you want to see on the GS911, let me know and I'll make a video on it. Cheers!